Hello everyone and welcome to the 1001 Assignment 3 Overview video. My name is Harry Keatley, I'm one of the tutors for 1001, and let's jump right into it. Okay, so first of all the assignment can be found under uh, the assessment tab in Blackboard where it usually is. Um, pick yourself up a copy of the task sheet and also download these A3 files in the zip and I've just got them on my desktop here. Okay, so if you open up the PDF, um, you'll see this lovely document here. There's going to be a few things that we want to do before we even start reading this. But the first one of them is to download a better IDE. So if you're still working with IDLE, uh, this assignment is going to be so hard to complete. Um, you know, IDLE serves its task. It's, it's, it's relatively uh, underwhelming. <laughs> it really just provides you like a notepad to write in. Um, however, you know, for this more complex sort of assignment with multiple files, you really need something like either PyCharm which is what uh, I'd probably recommend, or VS Code, which is what I'll be using for this, uh, this overview video. So PyCharm, there are two options to you right now. Uh, the community version is fine, and you can just download that here. However, because you're a student, you actually have access to a bunch of free, really high quality software. And uh, one of them is the JetBrains uh, products, uh, of which PyCharm is one of them. So you can get the uh, full professional version for free while you're a student at UQ, which I, I would really recommend you to do. Um, I won't be showing you how to actually do that in this video. You, you can go up and you can go look that up on Google yourself. But yeah, really recommend that. Um, but at the very least, definitely pick yourself up either PyCharm or VS Code for this assignment. And uh, it'll be more clear as to why you need that in the future. So the next thing you're going to want to do is go onto Google and uh, search for how to set a margin at the 80 character width limit for the specific ID you chose, so either PyCharm or VS Code. And so what this margin will end up looking like, um, I've got VS Code open here, this is just a new file. You can see I've got these orange lines that are um, down this middle of my screen right now. So this first one I've set at 80 characters, and this helps me, uh, you know, if I'm ever t just randomly coding a line, if I ever go over that line, I know that I can just split it onto the next line and uh, I'll still be under that limit. Um, so that's a really useful tool, uh, just that you guys should be aware of as well. Okay, so now let's make a start on opening up the uh, base files and running the setups. So again, I have my zip file here on the desktop. I'm just going to unzip that. And now you want to open up the respective IDE that you chose. In my case, it's going to be VS Code. And I'm going to open that directory. So uh, for VS Code, it will look something a little like this. For PyCharm, uh, you'll have options like start a new project, or in this case, you'll want to select open. Um, so I'm going to also select open folder. And I'm just going to locate that uh, directory on my desktop here. So open this up. As opposed to an individual file, uh, the directory will allow you to see everything inside the directory here on the left, which is what we want. Okay, let's full screen that. So uh, your first your first reaction here might be to scream. There's probably more files uh, in a directory here that you're going to be working with than you've ever done before. Um, and it's, it's perfectly normal to feel a little bit overwhelmed at this point. Um, we really want to get you in the habit of reading, reading a fair bit of code for this assignment, since that is really going to be uh, quite a lot of your, of your work in the future if you ever choose to pursue this sort of, this sort of career. Um, so yeah, we, we're trying to get you the habit of reading code. It's going to be okay. I mean, I've, I've been doing it for years now and I'm, I'm only uh, partially emotionally damaged. So I think just one assignment should be all right for you guys. Um, okay, so it's made a little bit less intimidating by a few things. First of all, you don't have to modify any of these files apart from the app file or app.py app file. So you, you can feel free to create your own, your own files to make the segmentation of the classes a little bit easier but you, you shouldn't actually, yeah, really, you can't modify uh, the rest of these files. Okay, so a really important thing, guys, which I did forget was that, you know, although I said that you can add other files and that's completely fine. Um, first of all, again, don't modify any of the files apart from app.py that were provided to you, but also make sure that app.py is always going to be the starting point for your whole project, as in um, this, the main function should actually happen in app.py. So the reason for this is because when we're either when we're testing when we're testing your files eventually, uh, we're going to be running app.py. So if you've actually put the start point for your project in one of the files that you've created yourself, 
Um, it's just not going to work. It's just better to start it off this way. So yeah, keep in line with, with what we've set out, what we've set out for you guys. Okay, so let's go and uh, run the setup file now. Um, so what do we actually need to do this in the first place? Well, this assignment uses the PyMonk Python library. Um, so otherwise, you know, without doing this setup uh, step first, you're not going to be able to see anything on the screen. So to actually run it, there's a few ways you can do it. Um, in, in uh, what is it, in PyCharm, you can go up to the top here and click run and run the setup Py file. Um, in VS Code, you can also do this a few ways. You can open up a terminal here, which is what I'm gonna do, and type python3 setup.py. And uh, you'll get a bit of a description as to what's actually happening. I've already installed, installed, or I've already run this setup.py file, so it's just gonna tell me I've already done that. Um, and you'll have again something similar, similar for PyCharm here. So the other way, uh, if you if you were less comfortable with all of this, you could just open up the file in idle and run it, like you have been for your other your other files so far, and that's completely fine as well. But that's all that's all good. We should have the PyMonk library now installed, and we are now ready to go about writing some code. So now on to methodology for how to complete this assignment. Um, if we go back to the task sheet here for a second, and I'm down inside the tasks section. Um, you can see that a lot of the a lot of the functionality has been split out into certain tasks, um, and you know that'll be like task one will have a certain amount of things, and task two will have a certain amount of things to implement. So what you're going to want to do here is scroll down um, this sort of section, and when you want to implement something like 4.1, for example, uh, actually come into the code. And I know this is going to be a bit confusing, and that's the wrong search. But you're going to want to search for the specific section you're implementing. So it doesn't start off with 4.1; it actually starts off with 1.1. Um, so the way that that works is uh, which which task are you trying to implement, and then what's the what's the number of the feature that we're up to so far. So task one, uh, starting off the app class, I'm going to search for 1.1 here inside VS Code, and it takes me down to the very bottom of the file, and you'll find a comment saying that here is where you should be implementing that piece of code. Um, so this is quite useful. Uh, and the reason for it is because say for example, 1.2, you can see there are actually four locations throughout, throughout this file. I'm going to have to modify some code and you just want to make sure that you don't miss any of that because potentially, you know, some of the later sections of the assignment will rely on this earlier functionality, uh, to be correct. So what I can do is I can come through these and I can just be clicking next, uh, implementing the bit of functionality I have to for that section. So that is probably the best way to go about, um, you know, actually filling out these tasks here or, or uh, completing these tasks here. So the second thing that I wanted to talk about as a bit of a hint is that try not to uh, immediately try and write the code uh, from scratch for certain sections. Um, in a lot, in the majority of these, ta in the cases for these tasks, you're going to find that there are methods either somewhere in this file or somewhere in the other files uh, that you can call upon to do a certain task for you um, that's gonna make your life a hell of a lot easier. You know, although there's lots of code here, it's actually it's actually been, a lot of it's been written for you and you just have to find out which, what goes where. So I thought of one additional hint that I could give just to make your life a little bit easier. Um, so the example is going to be around this view right now. And say for example, I have no idea what this view actually does, but I'm going to, I know I'm going to need to use it to implement a little bit of functionality. Well, what I can actually do is I can, uh, it, I'm not sure the exact key binding uh, because it does change between PyCharm and VS Code. And I think it also changes if you're on Mac or Windows, whatever, but it's one of the modifiers. So Command or Control or, or Shift or Option or something. If you press Command and you click uh, on a certain uh, attribute there. You can actually, it, it will take you to the piece of code where that was uh, defined, right? So if I click this view, you know, it actually takes me to this line. And if I wasn't sure what a game view was, well, I can click here and I can actually go now into this game file and see what is available to me on a game view uh, instance, right? So this is useful if you wanna know what this actually does do go and look at the file which it was implemented in. Um, and yeah, now you have, uh, now you can read through these methods and see if they actually implement the bit of functionality that you want. So you're going to be using the game view quite early on. So I thought this was a, uh, a useful example in that case. 
And that that's sort of one of the reasons why I really like PyCharm, oh sorry, PyCharm or VS Code over something like Idle. Uh, Idle will not let you do this sort of thing. Um, and yeah, this, this is really useful for when the projects start to get a little bit bigger. Okay, so um, I don't think I can actually give you any hints on the implementation of this. So that's going to be almost it for me. Um, good luck, <laughs> have fun. Um, and my last piece of advice is going to be to come to practicals early to ask for help uh, as opposed to later, just because you'll be able to get you know more direct help from the tutors. Okay. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Again, good luck.